have on their table near their table. This is the handout. This is the last handout. She's delivering the song. Carrying them around. Literally not have. Nancy's like hoarding them over here. She's not sharing. Well, if we have something extra. Okay. And does everybody have will have that? Yeah. So we're gonna pray. We're gonna open up the, the psalm, the book of the psalms. Does everybody have a Bible? We have a couple over here. Um, and we're gonna open up to the, the book of the psalm. The Psalm 24, which is probably a familiar one to many of us. You might not like have it memorized. Psalm 24. Excuse me, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. So Psalm 23. Uh, so you might be like 23. I love that. my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In green pastures, you let me break. To safe waters you lead. You restore my strength. You guide me along the right path for the sake of your name. Even when I walk through a dark valley, I fear no harm. You are at my side. Your rod and staff give me courage. You set a table before me as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and love will pursue all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I thought that was a pretty familiar psalm. I'm going to play perhaps for some of you, this might resonate song, so it's taking this song, you might be familiar with it.
on our hearts that sense of the Heavenly Father, the Shepherd, guiding us and our families. Perhaps we, in those moments, through the banquet table full and, and God was there, we've gone through dark valleys, and God was there. Our hope is just to stay in that gaze of the love of the Heavenly Father, the Good Shepherd. To know his heart. So we present all of our, our desires, our needs, our loved ones, our family, our intentions. We just ask our Lady to just cover Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Before we come to Psalm 23, we use that example of the shepherd. Um, and so often, uh, there's, there's themes throughout the whole scriptures, and that image of a shepherd is, is very common as well. Even today, like, we look at the, the images of you know you know what the main thing that sheep produce that sheep actually produce right so you might notice that I'm wearing a wool sweater today you'll notice the color of the wool I am the black sheep of the that's why I need the shepherd to help guide me along the way yeah I mean I think um, so very often we'll, we'll, we'll have those things that we can grapple, those themes that come. And I, I said, for those of you who were just, you know, at the beginning, like, think about those genres and the themes of, of the song. And some of those touch our hearts, they, they move us in such a way. And there's, there's seasons, right? There's seasons in our life, like, I mean, even that, that, that Psalm 23, like, I mean, sometimes you've been in the, in, in the meadow, sometimes you've been in the valley, sometimes you've been uh, in that sense of the table, of banquet, and sometimes you have a sense of the enemies are the beauty of that, the sense of the uh, of the shepherd walking with this rod and his staff. Um, you may have noticed that you've been to either confirmations or you've been to um, cathedral at times, the bishop or any bishop that comes, he wears a miter on his head, mm. uh, the, the pointy hat, and he, and he stands with a crozier. And that crozier is to be in that, that line of, of the good shepherd. And sometimes the shepherd is used to that to keep the enemies away, right? Kind of like and the bears coming with the lions, right? He uses that. In some cases, when the sheep try to get lost, you got to direct them with it, with a little kind of tap on the side. Sometimes even they fall into a hole. Like that, that's why it's in that shape, that they would use that to pull them out, believe it or not. And that's, that's why we had that direction for us in the church. And so before, really, the church ultimately was established, like we came through this history of our, our early Jewish sisters and brothers, right? The formation and foundation of our church. Um, and so this past month, almost these past five weeks, we studied the Psalms, which ultimately is a conversation between our heart and heart of God. So we look at the ears, like, almost like a burning bush over here. Hey, God, like, like I know at times, Lord, I'm told that you see me, you hear me, and you love me, um, but there's times when I'm distracted. And so what the Psalms help us to do is to, to come back there. So if we just kind of went through a little bit of a history of the Psalms, because sometimes I forget, I, I'm sure I remember, so... Tell me a little bit about some, some interesting facts that maybe over the, over the past month that have, have touched you specifically. Like, how many psalms are there? Okay. Um, and when you even think about 150 psalms, it's broken up into uh, different sections, right? Do you have a, a sense of that? What, what does that mirror? What does that mirror? The, the, the sections, not the genres, but the sections of the psalms. Lamentations, Thanksgiving, and okay, those, those are those are those genres. And genres, genres. okay. So, so it mirror? The, the, the book of the Psalms mirrors uh, a, a section of the Bible, the Pentateuch, which is oh, the Pentateuch, the yeah. first five books, okay. and the Psalms are kind of broken up in a similar way, like a fi like five sections of the Psalms. We even go back before that. The Bible is it a, is it a book? No, it's a library, and so there's different parts of that. The first part, right, the Torah of the law, 
the five books of the Bible. Um, do, we, do you remember those ones? Or go now. Genesis. Very good. So, so, that, so those, those again are those foundational. There was nothing. There was nothing. God was up there. There was God up there. The God of the sun and the stars and stuff. And then he broke in into this revelation. And there was a connection and relationship. And people started to, to, to the, the ancient writers wrote that down. So we have it. And there was the first five books, and it developed from that over the history of time. And we remember that for, from the standpoint of our Israel, our, the Israelites, the people of Israel, were they always in one place? No. They were nomads. They were nomads. And especially when they came back from Egypt, right? So the, they were free from Egypt, and they traveled around for, for, for a, couple of, a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> They should have listened to the women, right? Stop. I'm going in the direction. Stop. Leave me alone here. Leave me alone. Right. So done. Just, just kidding. Um, and so and so the Lord, the, 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 the significance of that, which I don't think I mentioned, but 40 years is a generation. It's a generation. And so believe it or not, in a generation, we can either really get it right or we can lose it all. And so even those uh, our ancient ancestors, that, that grappling of like, like all right, we know that there's a God. There's been the connection of Moses with the burning bush. We know he brought us out of Egypt. And yet there's certain things about Egypt, like it was comfortable. Like I was comfortable sitting. Sometimes we hear the term, we sat by the flesh pots. It was just, it wasn't what we wanted. It wasn't food that we would normally eat. We're here in Egypt. But like, it's just comfortable. I want to go back there. Maybe none of you, but I've, I've had times in my journey, you know, like, I'm like, I am going on a diet, right? I'm going on a diet. And there are certain things that I'm like, I can't eat that, or I can't drink that. And so, but you know what? Like, this, this like, grass juice stuff is terrible. Like, I would, much, I would just much rather have, like, a milkshake or something like that, right? And so I know if I stay over here with the milkshakes and whatever, some of these other things, like, it's not healthy for me arteries, my veins, all that kind of stuff, but like, that really, it's hard, or I don't really like it, I don't want that, right, but, you know, the, the cross was hard, right, the cross was hard, and so as the, as the Israelites were kind of like moving through, um, through the desert, they're like, we want to go back to the flesh pots, we want to go back to the milkshakes and the, you know, the Oreos and the whatever, I don't know, on Halloween, right, I'm like, well, this is candy, right, but, but, but that's not, that's not where... Spiritual health is. And so that it was this nomadic time. And then eventually they said, We need leadership. And so we want a king. The first king that came was Saul. And Saul was broken, but he didn't know really, he didn't have a good relationship with, with God. And so there was someone else that came. Who came? David. 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 And what yeah. did David have specifically? He knew the heart of God. He knew the heart, the heart of God. God. He knew the heart of God. Now, who wrote all the stuff? A bunch of people. David wrote some, and there were other authors. And we take that, right? Take that because at different times in the journey of Israel, there was there was hurt, there was joy, there was lamentations, there was rejoicing and thanksgiving. And so we kind of compiled that into the 150 Psalms. First Psalm we always begin with is the law, right? We start with law. We have those roots deep, right by right by the um, the river, right? So when the, so when the, the roots go out, they can get to the water. And stay replenished. That's like the law. When we go to the last Psalm 150, it's like giving praise to God. It's like everything that has breath, give praise to God. So give me a couple of examples of genres or themes of the Psalms. Genres or themes. Come on, there's a lot of yelling. Rescue. That's a theme. Oh. Rescue. Worship. Okay. So these are some of those themes that come out. 
Lament. Just in case I forget. Lament. What does that mean again? Sounds like a lamb. Oh, complain. Kvetch. It's a kvetch. Lambs and sheep. Bad. Bad. Complaining. And God hears. Lament. Thanks and, and glory and praise. Lord, we're, we're just grateful. I forget sometimes. You know, we pray for protection, cover, and rescue. And the law, like, so, like we need guide grip. We need guardrails and guidelines yeah. sometimes. I don't like them. I don't like it. I don't want to be told what to do. Right? I don't want to be told what to do. And yet, right? And yet, so that's what helps us in the journey. The Lord lays things out. He gives us the commandments, the Ten Commandments. Well, I, I, I want to do whatever I want. I want to do whatever I want. Well, so even like even that the development of the Old Testament and the development of, of the Psalms and these, these connections, the Lord has presented things with us to deepen our relationship, to stay in connection. Some people say, I can't hear God. And that's what the beauty of praying the Psalms is. Mm-hmm. Is that as we go through it, little by little, there's a word, there's a phrase, a sentence, or maybe even a whole psalm that really resonates with us. And so time, sometimes we're in seasons that that really works for me. Like even sometimes we hear that with that song. Like, I remember that song. It brings me back. It brings me back to the time. Like, Lord, Lord, I was all over the place. And you shepherded me back to the table. You shepherded me back to the family, to the flock. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So ultimately, what we come down to, as we jump off from John with the Christ worship the liturgy, is that when, they, when the um, Israelites stopped moving all over the place, then they came to, a, to, to David and said, we're here in Jerusalem. And if you bring that word, Jer- Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Shalom, which means peace. 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 What do we desire? Peace. What's not really happening in Jerusalem right now? Peace. So is that of God? No. 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 That's not of man. That's, that's, that's man. Well, my, my word is right. Okay, well, let's discern that. Let's pray about it, right? So Jerusalem. But in worship and liturgy, right? <laughs> See this over here? We got the, the just in case you don't want to show us the altar, that's the incense right there. That's the incense. Because why do we worship and give praise to God? Think about that in Eucharistic prayer. Why do we do that? Because it's right and just. It is truly right and just. It's truly right and just. But life gets in the way, Father. My grandbabies is driving me nuts. My kids are driving me nuts. I'm taking care of an elderly parent. I'm doing this, this, like all these kind of things. Or I'm going to lacrosse or soccer and all these kind of things. And so those are goods. Those are good. But when God gives us everything, then it is right, correct, and just that we offer back an hour. That's fun. And if you take now, like, although Father Angel is pretty quick today, he might not even be like an hour either. <laughs> He's got the hurry up offense going on. Let's go up to the line, everybody. Come on. But but and, and we know that we've had that experience where some people um, they, they offer just a really beautiful and powerful mass and it takes an hour and twenty minutes. And someone offers up a beautiful, powerful mass and it takes a little bit less. But we slow down and, and do that. You know, we stop. It's so funny when people say to me, like, oh father so and so. I was in uh, I was in Ireland one time and, and it was actually it was after I was just ordained. I went over there with some family and met with some family. And um, um, his name was Paul, Father Paul. And this is how my family spoke about Father Paul, who had been there for a while, younger, you know, younger. Um, oh, Father Paul, Father Paul. He says a fast mass. <laughs> and like, it was my first experience of being at a Sunday mass with the creed. Uh, everything else was there, and it was like, Sunday mass, like everything was, well, and it might have been music, and and I, and so like when I think about this for, for me, at least for me, like I'm sure that there'll be there'll be some memories where people are like get out of here, but like, <laughs> like, like I feel like I prayed about it, hmm. you know, I feel like I, I gave praise and thanksgiving, and I slowed down, you know, not like it was a fast mass or a long mass, his homilies were too short, his homilies were too long, but he was able to lead me and my family. Remember that it is right and just. It is right and just that we come here to give praise to God. To give praise to God. You know? That's right. So, who knows? So let's come to our homework. We'll pause for a second and come to some other things. But when we talk about
about the genres, just real quick. Okay, I'm going to ask, I'm going to put some counts on my spot. If there's one of these, these genres up here that, that, that like, resonate with you, your number, like that, can, it, would you mind just sharing, like, hey, look, I'm in a place of lament, okay? Can I see the Okay, so if we can, is it the Psalm 91, the security under God's protection. Did everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah. If you open up the Psalm 91, sometimes it would say like a Psalm of David or be another title. Psalm 91, the security under God's protection. Oh. And that's the song we know. He was what? For God commands, so, the, so it's Psalm 91. Verse 11. Can you ask you to read that out nice and loud? Okay, for his angels, for his angels, he has given command to them that they guard you all your ways. Amen. Guardian angels. Psalm 91, verse 11. That God commands the angels to guard you in all your ways. second. I just wanted everybody to bring that in. Think about that. Maybe you, know, the, you spoke about that, that time in your life. You know, was there a moment in that in your life where you're like, I, I, I sensed that. I felt that. That was my experience. God's protection, cover, Burning coals fall on them. 
let the step, let the flounce into the pit. No more to rise. Do not let the slander be established in the land. Um, that evil speedily hunt down the violent. <coughs> know that the Lord maintains the cause of the needy and executes the justice for the poor. Um, I think the, the beginning part there, it just seems the world has so much wickedness in it and evil. You know, so I just feel like you know, the evil doers and stuff play into God's most of them. Carol, have you ever felt like the whole thing about like the hot cold coming down with the anger and disappointment around you? Have you ever sensed that like God, take care of them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put them in hell. <laughs> 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 I really think that if these people don't repent, these people killing cops and doing things and, and yeah. evil that's going on. Has anybody else felt like that? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. yeah. So so like these these are these are raw words from the heart. In the Bible, we can resonate with them. So that was awesome. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm, is there anybody else with something that like has a similar either confession, cover phrase, or lament? Give me a second. I'm not speedy like you. Yeah. <laughs> psalm 55. Boom. Do not hide anything. The whole psalm or maybe just a line from the psalm? It, which is, is, it was like a line from a couple of lines from the psalm. It said, My heart is filled with anguish, and I am beset by the terrors of death. Fear and trembling overpower me. Horror overwhelms me. I say, if I only had wings like a dove so that mm. I could Anybody else resonate with that? I'm going to bring up my little book. You bring know. up your little book. <laughs> but give us a second to find the page. Yes. Yeah. Psalm 89 is really long, but I can't read it. But before I came to this class, I was reading the Psalms because I didn't really know that much about it. What I love is your one um, sheet that you tell us what the Psalm is ahead of time. And it's the first time I did it. Like, And this is a Psalm of indiv Individual Lament. And there were some that were powerful for me. One of them was, the most, um, some of the lines were, my love is established forever. Mighty Lord, your loyalty is always present. Yeah. Yours are the heavens, the earth. You founded the world and everything in it. And then the one that I really started is, and this is the one that like, brought me to really, at this moment when I was doing it, really to tears, is happy the people who walk in the radiance so, you know, we're called to, you know, it's just so exciting. I like this one is love lament, but I thought it includes everything. You know, when you're in, when you're, the Lord is radiant, you know, he's smiling at you. And, um, take, and take, take that a little more. So, when, when the face, the radiance of the Lord, explain that to okay, me a little bit. Yeah, happy moment then. Yes! All right. <laughs> because it's emotional. Um, my son is, uh, my, fifth, my fifth son is from Ethiopia, and he's been with us since 13 years old, and we've had a battle with him. But now he's in a really happy place, and he's at Siena College, he's a senior, and we went to see him up in college with, uh, as some of you know, we have a Ukrainian married couple that lives with us. Hmm. We know the girl since she's eight, but now she's 25, she's married. Her husband's 21. And we brought them up to college to see Mo. My son's name is Mo. And we left them there to spend the night in the senior housing. And then my husband and I went somewhere else. To, and then we come back and we always go to 11 o'clock mass at Siena College. And the priest there, Father Larry, has married two of my kids. Mm. And the reason why my son is there is because of him. Um, and. Uh, he did the mass, and my husband and I told Alina, Sasha, and Mo, we'll see you at 11 o'clock mass. We didn't think we'd see them because of the night before. And I have to tell
tell you when they came in, that's what that line is. Happy the people, um, happy the people who walk in the radiance of your face. My husband said it. I said it. it they came in all happy and proud that they got up <laughs> and came into mass, and um, they sat with us. And my son, who has been the most challenging, who's 22 now, he just seems so proud, you know, that he remembered and he brought Alina and Sasha because they're not really that religious, but they went through the war and they went through a lot of stuff. And we've been trying to get them to mass, and it was the first time, so it was very exciting. And the most important thing is Father Larry announced them at Mass and said their names. And, and you know, they're, they're um, Russian, so they just heard their name and they're like, you know, and they were kind of a little bit like celebrities. So I feel like, you know, that was like God saying, I got this. You know, they're okay. So that was my God moment. I had it last week, but I couldn't say it, so I said it this, this time. But anyway, thank you for this course. This course has been amazing. So just in case you know, the senior housing she's talking about is like seniors in college, right? So that's why she's just doing it. Are the seniors going to get up? They got up. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Okay. Is there any uh, historic significance between the eagle's wings and the eagle in the psalm? Yeah, so, so uh, again, you, you have... What you hear in, in, in a lot of the in, in the Psalms and in the Old Testament is what was the experience that, that of the Middle East. You know, like these were these were they were large. You know, they talked about large sea animals. They probably saw whales. You know what I'm saying? But the the eagle is such a um, such a strong uh, like animal, and so to see it with that strength coming up and coming down, swooping with their talons to get you know like prey or fish or whatever it might be. There's just a, a, a powerful image of that. But maybe you've had the experience where you, you've been outside and, and, and you, you've had a, a, a large bird, maybe it could, it could even be like a, a, a goose or something, when they fly over, right, there's a cover, even if it's just for a brief moment. Brief moment that, that they come over, like there's a shadow of the wing, it's a shadow of the wing. And to think that the power of God and the strength of God we can hold up with that sense of the eagle, right? the strength of the eagle and the eagle's wings covering protecting us, and that's why you, that would resonate when you hear that a lot. Thank you. Well, my favorite, favorite song is, is Psalm 63. And, um, Psalm 63? Yeah. Give us a second, all there up. Come on. 6-3. 6 Think about that image of a dry, weary land without water. Huh. Dry, like the desert. I know you holy people, it's never been an issue with you, but some of us, you know, like, it's the dryness in our heart. Where's the prayer? Thirsting. It's a summer day, you die of thirst. Like, Lord, where are you? Quench me. Quench my thirst. So... I don't know if you noticed what we just did. A lot of times, and we're going to have another opportunity in just a couple of weeks when Deacon Tony does another adult faith formation uh, course up in the church, the mass. Um, and so, like, so very often, very often we look, we look to, at, the God guy, and the God girl. Oh, sister said it. The deacon said it. 
right? But you just did it. You just did it. So what did Jesus do? There was a crowd of 5,000. And he, and he talked. And he talked. And then he pulled a few away. He had 12. And a lot of times he pulled Peter, James, and John. And so you could say, like, in the, this next town that we're going through, this next experience that we're going through, we're gonna, I'm going to need you to do X, Y, and Z. Sometimes people, you know, sometimes we're, we're setting up the table for the Last Supper. Sometimes we're, we're preaching, even to some cases where they said even the shadows of the apostles when they went by, miracles could happen. And so in our baptism, in our baptism, we are baptized with priest, prophet, and king. Mm. Priest, prophet, and king. And we've been instilled in this ability to really proclaim this truth. Now, you know, sometimes there, in, the, in the body of Christ, there are different people that use it, their gifts and talents in different ways and calls it into leadership or service. But for you and I, the, the one place that we have to do it more than anything is in our own family, right? So when we go back home, when we go back home, you just shared, some of you, and then throughout this whole time, you shared in front of other people. I did I did a couple of us here in front of right? <laughs> And, and, it, and sometimes it's like that beautiful reflection of kind of tying things in for all, like in the midst of everything that's happened, right? My family's in this place. I have a first responder in my family. I have a child in college. I have, you know, a you know, grandchild who's, you know, struggling in school or whatever it might be. My heart aches for them. It aches for them. And you know what? I can remember, like, growing up as a kid, my grandmother, uh, we, she lived on a place called Shore Road in Bay Ridge. And I would come home, my grandfather would walk me home from uh, St. Patrick's uh, kindergarten. And then my grandma would make me like a, just a simple uh, sandwich. And it was like the small uh, like brick oven, the white uh, bread. And sometimes, like, uh, I mean, leave, leave the crust on. I mean, they don't even cut that stuff off. But it, but it was her that made it. It was her that filled my heart. And so for you, maybe it's something that you do. I know with my nieces and nephews, this like like my two nieces are totally into this Chick-fil-A thing, right? So we're gonna do a Chick-fil-A, you know, and then it's but then I, I, I read into their heart, I pray with them. We always pray, they pray, they like Father Joe, my Uncle Joe, I got it, you know, I got it, I got it. And and like so that's what you do. And so when they're hurting or they're joyful, you know, we, we, we pray with them. If you look on your sheet, the shortest the shortest psalm is Psalm 172. Hmm. Right? You you probably could memorize it. You could memorize it. And, you know, even as Joanne was up here praying that, that, you know, like, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water, right? But to say, like, so so you, you hear something like, hey, I did well on my test. Like, my older grandma, grandma, I did well on my test. I got C plus, I did great, right? Well, praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you people. His mercy for us is strong. The faithfulness of the Lord lasts forever. Hallelujah. Right? So to know that. Or even just part of it. You know, I remember there was a person, um, this woman that I worked with, when I kind of, I use the term reversion. It's conversion. Right? It's like, hey, I was, I was over here, and I completely turned around. Right? A reversion is, I was here, then I went over here, and then I turned back around. So like, I, I, I like the reversion as opposed to a conversion. And this woman... Um, who has become a dear friend, we, we did youth ministry together, and she used to say, praise God all the time. It used to drive me crazy. <laughs> but where I was at, right? And she, I, I, and she was such a great speaker, and she was able to kind of gather young people like in such a powerful way. And I was like, Michelle, like, that's, the way you do that is, is just like, praise God. Like, with that just recognition that I've been given this gift, and I give thanks to God. You know? And, and like, To realize like, that, that you that you take it. So why why does that psalm resonate with you? Why does it resonate? Because you walk through that season. And so now you have to tell somebody that. And that's what disciples are. You know, even Jesus said when, uh, in Matthew 28, in Matthew 28, 
they said that they were at the, they were at the mountain and they, they, they doubted him. They just saw him raised from the dead and still they doubted him. So um, he said, Jesus said, uh, to go to all nations, baptize them, go and make the sun. Go and make the sun. Make the sun. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's a responsibility to us as family. We've been baptized, but we're called to make the sun. You just did. You just did. And some people have a great comfort of standing in front of other people and speaking. But let me make a couple of suggestions of what we can do. Because this is what we're going to have with them. So for us, we've come here, we come to the Mass, and we're fed, and you've made time. You've made time. And so here's the thing. Some of you in here, you know, some, some knew the story, right? And some people are like, I didn't know that. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And so some people you might be like, I, I, like, there's a connection with him or her. So, so we go, remember, we're in the big. We're, we're the 5,000. And then we go, we go small. And we say, maybe it's the table. Maybe it's someone saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested in learning a little bit more about whatever. I'm going to give you something besides coming to here uh, to speak at the podium in a couple of weeks. But what is a, what's going to happen in the next few weeks for us as the Catholic Church? What happens for us? It's an open-ended question. So you can say anything, right? All saints and all souls are happening the same tomorrow. What else? Advent. Advent. It's a new year. Okay? Maybe you holy people, right, have are always been like, oh Joe, we're prepared. I got the advent calendar, I've got the advent wreath, we're all set, we're gonna do that. I do a daily devotion when I come to mass, I add this, that, the other thing. Maybe you're used to doing that. I know I wasn't. But what's helped me, especially in the recent past, is there's a uh, there's some really great um, ways to build up whether it be the Psalms, the scriptures, or your or your general faith. I'm going to make some recommendations, big to small, and then you see what, what resonates for you. So for, for people who um, are ordained or have take vows, we're bound. We're really bound by, like, if, if we don't do this, then I have to go to confession. I have to pray the Psalms, the Liturgy of the Hours. The priests and deacons and religious have to do this. And if I don't pray any of the hours, because I promised, I stood in front of people and said, for you, 16 years ago, I said, I promise I'm going to pray. And you can tell when people don't pray, because they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. they don't, they're just talking. There's no depth of, of like taking the scriptures and making it resonate in my heart. And I'm sure there's times you're like, what are you guys saying? Here, right? And, and some of us struggle at times, but the beauty of this for me as a Catholic priest is I pray this every single day. And sometimes, I got to say, in recent past, especially moving for me. But sometimes it's more. Sometimes it doesn't work. But I continue to pray. So this is called the, the office, right, or the, um, the liturgy of the hours. And so what this does is around the, the world, there's always someone praying there, 24 hours a day. God bless you. In Cambodia, in yeah. Australia, there's someone praying there. And you can buy the fourth, fourth set volume of the liturgy of the hours, and you can pray. And if, if you do, I'll show you how to do it. Right? So if you want to buy the actual physical thing. So here, I'll show you something really interesting. So this is mine, right? So, and I've prayed this since 2001. So you can tell that I've, I've read it. You look at this and you're like, hey, Father Joe, that doesn't look like you're right. <laughs> well, let me tell you why. Because this is the Advent Christmas season, and this is mine. I got it in 2000, 2001. But this one was my Uncle Bob. And so we found it in some things, like when I was kind of early on. And so I've always prayed with this. And I look at it, it says, Robert Emmett Hearn, my, my mom's brother. And sometimes I've gone through here, I'm just being honest, like, there's like rips. They look like little food spots. I'm like, I wonder Uncle Bob is eating that. <laughs> this has been in there for I don't know how long, but this is from like 1970, 1980s. It was like an artifact. And I'm like, when I pray this, I know I'm praying, I pray with others. And so this has worked. This is the liturgy of the hours. It's big. There's a smaller version. It's called the shorter Christian prayer or Christian prayer. Everything, all four, are kind of combined into this. Sometimes you'll see.
see this out here in the church. We pray it sometimes during uh, uh, the like Easter or Advent, and, and that's something that it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable. The, the, the challenge is it's a little tricky going back and forth, but that might be your thing. So, so for example, I open it up, and it says Wednesday morning, week four, and the Psalms are here, 150 the Psalms. Well, here are some other readings, too. And that, that, might, that might work with you to continue off of this. Right? I'm staying here in that conversation. Hard copy. The other thing that we have is um, our phone. There are apps on the phone. Mm. And so the same exact thing, and they do it for you, is in order on either iBreviary. This is called a breviary. The office or the breviary. You got a lot of it. What happened? You have the pen name for <laughs> This is called a breviary, right? So it's I, right? Kind of like online breviary. Or you can do the liturgy, the hours, um, as well as the Bible office. And there's an app for it. I got both of them. They're on here. So I got the divine office. And what I like about this one is if you're lazy, which I can be sometimes, they actually they sing. Say the Lord. So they mix it up, and, and, and like, like you can like say, like, I'm too tired to pray. It's like, it's right with it for you. And if I pull this up open right now, which I love about this, this uh, app specifically, is I can tell you who's praying right now. It tells you who's actually praying right now in the whole world with this app. There's 314 people praying in the whole world. Show you. See those little dots on there? So like because scary thing, right? Big brother. They know where you're at. But this there's somebody like there's people all over the world. There's a person in Australia, in Indonesia. And there's three there's three dots in Africa right now, people are praying. It's with the same app. So that's 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 another op, you know, option on here. I, I mentioned this the last couple of years. Bible in a year. I, I started listening to it two years ago. I think it's a, I think it's a great app. I was listening to it today. Uh, I don't usually listen to it all the time, but I was listening to it today because I wanted to make sure I had it all squared away. So it's just, this guy, Father Mike Schmidt, he's a priest out in Minnesota, yeah. Yeah. and he's, he's he's just great. Yeah. The voice isn't too painful. It's about fourteen minutes long. And they're doing a and they're doing a um, Advent reading. That's what started off in, in January. And so, like again, it's it's like, hey, listen, some of these big words, they they slow. You know, or this is just too much to get the Bible out. Where are you at? Okay, you can listen to it, right? You can listen to it. And then um, I I get this subscription. There are others, the Magnificat. And so in the Magnificat, um, you have. The daily readings and psalms and reflection, and you'll have other readings throughout the month. There are other things like, uh, well, I think um, uh, Joanne has this day, same thing. It has, it has the mass reading. So what do you do? Maybe you get here a little bit early. You sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament. You read the readings, and then you listen to Father Anthony or me or some of the other people who come to help us. And then it's like that resonating with you. Or you'll realize that sometimes like, we'll do the first reading. Sometimes we'll preach on the psalm. Sometimes, because like, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to bore you all. I want to say, like, how's the Lord speaking today? And that's, that's why I try and listen. Mm. I do not, I have never, I have never, ever, actually, I'll tell you one funny story about that. But I've never not prepared a homily. Yeah. Like, that's, that's insulting. Yeah. That's absolutely insulting. And I learned that from one of my professors from college, Father Bob Smith. But there was a mistake one day. <laughs> there was a mistake. Um, and he was in, he he was supposed to preach like on Tuesday. Well, he misread it and he shows up. And I'll never forget this. This is like master's doctorate level people sitting there, and like so we're so critical. Like, how did the priest hold his hand? Did he hold this right, that right? And he got up and how humble he was. And that's why I love him so much. He said, "Listen, I'm standing with some people, and this guy is like a doctor or whatever. But some of you are smarter than I am. 
I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to insult you by saying, I'm, like, I'm just not prepared. So why don't we just stay with what we just listened, pray with you for a minute, and we'll get started. And then we'll continue the next. I'm like, humility? I'll tell you one thing. So there was a series of readings that were all lined up. I went back to the seminary as a, as a newly ordained. And they, and the, they, they always ask someone the same thing. <coughs> so you preach. You know, we want you to preach. So my classmate read the reading.
sometimes I look at you and I'm like, gosh, I know it's, I feel like I wonder what's going on in her heart. She seems so joyful. Or he's got something going on in his head, he's grappling. You know, these, these are something to be great. They say, hey, let's, our table, let's get to our two, our, our sister Miriam James, and let's, let's commit to doing once a week or twice a week, whatever it might be. So that, that's my encouragement to you guys as you go and read the site. And the last thing I would say, just there's some great books up here that I think can help you in your spiritual journey. But I know what everybody always asks me is, what about my kids or my grandkids or my god kids or my, right? Actually, one of our parishioners wrote this book. Um, he wrote part of this book. Todd and me, the kids are in school here. So Mark Hart and Todd and me wrote this book. It's called 100 Things Every Catholic Student Should Read. And I'm not. I read this book. Like, oh, you know? But this is a great little stocking stuffer. This is a great little thing for some of those folks who are like, what's going on? And it answers some great questions. But here's my challenge for you, right? I, I always, I'm not going to recommend, like I said, I can't recommend Nancy, I can't recommend your book yet because I haven't read it. But I know if you if you had it and, and Father Bob had it, I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling okay about it, but I have to read it before I can say absolutely recommend it. I would tell you the same thing with this. Get it, take a look at it, have some time. It's not a big one. You can read through it. It's like, wow, this answers some questions for me. This talks about the catechism here, or scriptures, or church teaching, or whatever it might be. And then, oh, look what's showing up in the stocking. It goes back. This is great. So uh, I'm going to just let you kind of, kind of talk and take a look at these in a second after we pray. And then with, with these two specifically, so these two rejoice and behold, Sister Miriam and Father Mark Toos, right? I would say, get these. And then look around and say, all right, you three, we're going to Dinah, or you five, you ten, and sit around. It doesn't have to be here. It doesn't have to. I was at something I tried to drive home, especially during the uh, pandemic, and there's like five Bible studies going on because people were sitting around a fireplace and praying. Like, oh, I, I'm not doing it unless I'm doing it in the Abbey. We're not doing this Jesus stuff. Ah! No. And if you're doing anything wacky or you're unsure of it, then ask me. And I'll say, like, hey, no, that's, that's, you're right on. Grapple with that. Or, well, I thought you had to do with the church teaching, but I can kind of help you unpack that a little bit more. But ask the questions and work together and pray together. That's what this journey is about. Okay? Disciples, right? Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. That's what happens to our baptism. Priest, prophet, faith. So we'll pray and finish it off. I'll leave some of these things out. You can take pictures of them. The two in the front here, the two in the front are the ones I would say, get to this. I would encourage you. I'm not, I'm not getting any kickback or anything like that. Like I'm not working for a session press. But uh, I would say that those ones would, are, are really good. And they're people I trust and I know very, very well. Um, and I think that that would be good for the Advent journey. The other ones are just some nice books that, you know, like you might want to have in, in, your, uh, in your guest room or something or, or on your co coffee table. And or just in the future, you can read them. So let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son. Holy Spirit, good and gracious God, we we give you praise and thanksgiving. We know it is it is right and just, and we come before you for all that you have given to us. We look back on these past five weeks. We pray, Lord, um, that you continue to penetrate our hearts with that understanding of times when you were meant for you to be praised and honored and glory. Lord, on this day, um, we know it's all Hallows Eve, so we pray for the saints who quiet saints who have walked in our lives, family members, teachers, priests, religious brothers, deacons who have uh, just encouraged us along the way. We pray for them. And all souls, too, we know that some of us have lost loved ones this past year and in the recent past. On this day, too, Lord, the, the culture in the world can be a little wacky, so we ask for covering upon all of our families, our children, our young people um, who might go out to celebrate candy and cavities. We pray for um, for our parish that just down here in the Abbey is, is the the growing of the embers of faith. We will be strong and courageous to just think of the number, that psalm number that resonates for us, and when we hear something, we can we can speak into it for another person, or even just simply say, "What can I?" Pray
praise you today? Mm. How can I walk with you today? Mother Mary, we know that you probably would have been the first voice that Jesus would have heard in praying and praying the Psalms, especially. Mm. And so we just 